I'm here with Liam Dolan, and we're at Peaks Key, which is not your only operation, Liam. We've got several other things on the go in the yes. food and uh, catering to the public. Uh, tell us, uh, tell us about the various operations you've got. Uh, what we've got is Peaks Key here. I now just took over with my kids, the sole ownership of this. We have the Old Dublin Pub and the Clad Oyster House, which is my baby that I started 33 years ago. And I also run the, the big international shellfish festival that goes on every year. It's been it's my 21st year this year for it. So the you came to be uh, more than 30 years ago. Tell us about how that all got started. Ken was a young chef 38 years ago, arrived on the shores of Prince Edward Island, and uh, no one seems to ever stay in the He's playing the club here as a young chef, and chefs tend to travel a lot. We're, we're very transient people, and uh, and the Irish are very transient as well. So again, fell in love with Prince Edward Island. He was a chef at the Sheraton Hotel, which was the main, the main hotel then. And then uh, came Food and Beverage Management at Rockins Hotel, and then I decided there was a need for a fresh seafood restaurant in Prince Edward Island. We had the best food in the world, best oysters, mussels, everything we had here. But we weren't telling the story. So I opened up on Little Sydney Street, the worst street in Charlottetown, to open up a restaurant. It was, it was, uh, it was Wine Old Street, I call it. And, uh, and what we did was um, we opened up there. It was very successful. A lot of, a lot of long days and nights. It was up my wife, Kim. And then I opened the pub. Uh, three years later, I had the old Dublin pub. And then 22, I fused there. 22 years ago, we've had uh, Peak Ski here in the waterfront. I've expanded and pushed that over the years. And when I was down here, I looked at, okay, how do you extend the shoulder season here in PEI? Again, we don't tell a story very good here. So I said, well, let's have a shellfish festival. Actually, it was an oyster festival. The first, the first one ever happened was the first two years was oyster. Then I added the mussels. And now it's called the VI International Shellfish Festival. So, I like again, everyone says to me, "You're crazy calling the international." I said, we "Don't think big. It's not going to happen." So, and if you go back to 1983, you were really on the very front end. Uh, in the early 80s, you were on the very front end of what's become the culinary kind of development of VI. Yes, actually, we didn't even have a culinary school there. I was involved in involved in the organizing of getting the culinary institute in Canada here. It was a bunch of restaurateurs, or uh, Dave Broad, it was Don Groom, it was, uh, I can't remember all the people at the table. Well, who were the ones that first started so we need a culinary school in Prince Edward Island? And I'll never forget the day when we got the, the ranking of the Culinary Institute of Canada. The rest of Canada was very upset with this, <laughs> that little PI could have that title. But we, did, we ended up getting that title, and that's how the culinary, the culinary institute started. So, and since that, the, the quality of food and the whole level of food for in Prince Edward Island is just unbelievable. But I, as far as I'm concerned, we are the best, and I, and I really want to put the, our, our flag on the hill and say we are the culinary destination of Canada. And that's true right through the province, of course. Right through how it is all uh, uh, developed. And have you seen the traffic uh, grow because of that? Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, the bridge was a huge help to us, but since after the bridge coming and the food became more, uh, it's very relevant here. It's just, it's so fantastic, the food and the quality. I mean, tourists come here in the summer and they talk about. Uh, about how the food and the choices, like there is a lot of great choices in PEI. So let's come back to Liam as the entrepreneur. Um, where did that start? I don't know where it really started. I grew up on a small small farm in the west coast of Ireland. My father was a small mixed farmer and my mother, there was ten of us in the family and she was the, the manager. She was a great manager because we didn't know we thought we were poor. But we actually we were very well off. We were self-sufficient. We had our own chickens and cows and lambs and beef and we, 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 I, we, I thought when I grew up I was poor, but now when I look back, I, we were very, very wealthy. We were, we were very, and we killed today for having the same thing. My mother made the home made butter, the home made bread. We had everything. Uh, so, I don't know where it came from now. When I got here, I guess, and I came to Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island to me reminds me of home very much. And I guess then I wanted to, to there was no Irish pubs here, and I've been a chef, and I wanted to start our old seafood restaurant first in the Irish pub. And I guess it kind of grew from there that I, I just love Prince Brown. I've probably been more than Ireland than I love Ireland there because I believe so much in it and I, I love it so much and I, I, I kind of wear that flag everywhere I go and I love it sincerely. Yeah, there's two very important things in what you said. One, of course, is about telling our story. Yes. And you've been a great part of that and really seeing what's in play in sight and, and making sure people value that. And the second part, to go back to what you said about farming and entrepreneurs, I met about Oh, it must be 12 years ago now, and it was all the, the rage on about the Irish tiger, and the or the Celtic tiger, and uh, the, everybody you know, was talking about it, well, how, how Ireland had surged up from uh, what had previously been not been all that prosperous, 
And uh, the question was, well, where did the Irish get to the entrepreneurs? And he said, they're farmers, you know, and they, they just forgot them for a generation or so. <laughs> so, so uh, there you go, yeah. you're, you're bringing it back and I brought it to the DEI, so we're really happy that that's taken place. And, you got a good outlook for the current, the upcoming season. I think it's going to be fantastic. I think we'll have a record year. Last year we had a phenomenal year. So it has been going since 2014. It was a great year. Last year was a super year. I think this year's even going to be better than last year. I believe you're right. The dimensions are phenomenal this year, and uh, I just hope we can keep growing that for years to come. Great. Right. I want to wish you well for the upcoming season. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the good things you're doing for the economy. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, Leo. Okay. Take care. Good.